So today's video, we're going to build a 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery with a BMS that has Bluetooth connection and a low temperature disconnect. We're also going to use Calb cells, which are very cheap, but high quality. We're going to shove it all inside of this box that you can buy at Walmart for like 10 bucks. We'll put these terminals on the top of the battery box so that we can connect our battery to inverters and solar charge controllers. And this video will be beginner friendly. So if you've never built a battery before, you can start with this video. It will be dead simple. So first we need safety glasses because we're messing with batteries. And when you buy these Calb cells on AliExpress, it will come with bus bars. What you want to do is put them in a series configuration. So it should look like this, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. And then add the bus bars and then you'll have a main negative and a main positive for 12 volts. And now we're going to add hose clamps around our cells because as these cells are cycled, they can expand and contract. So we want to push them together. So go to the store and buy some cheap hose clamps. These are about $2 each. Now add the second hose clamp. Now that the hose clamps and the bus bars are installed, we're gonna remove some of these nuts and add a balance cable. So this comes with the BMS and it will have five wires. And each wire on the balance cable corresponds to a specific terminal on this battery that we need to attach it to. And most balance cables do not come with these terminal connectors, so go to your automotive store and add these and make sure that they are the right size for your battery. And on the balance cable, you will have a black wire and that will go to the first cell negative and we want to attach it right here. And after the first cell or the main battery terminal negative is connected, we want to attach the next wire on the balance lead, and this is the first cell positive. And this is the first cell, so we want to attach this wire to this terminal. Now that we have the main negative and first cell positive, we want to do the second, third, and the fourth cell positive and attach it to the terminals of our battery. And now our balance cable is attached and we can attach the BMS. And on the BMS you will have a B negative and a C negative. The B negative will connect to your battery's main negative terminal. But there is a problem. Our BMS only comes with 10 gauge tin copper wire. And this is high quality silicon wire and you can actually push 50 to 55 amps through this at this short of a length. But do we really want to? If you look at like a Battleborn battery, you're gonna have five of these connecting the BMS to the battery for a 100 amp continuous load capability. So depending on how you plan to use your battery will determine how many wires you wanna connect. If you're only using 60 amps continuous, you can use these just fine. If you have intermittent loads of 80 amps, then you can use these just fine. But if you start pushing 100 amps or continuous 80 amps or anything over 60, you do not want to use these wires. You want to add two more to each of the tabs or even upwards of five like a Battleborn because then you'll have a really good connection from the BMS to the main terminals of the battery. But for this video to make it simple and if you already know how to solder, I don't think you're going to be watching this video. So we're just going to slap a nice little copper lug on this and call it a day and then use a crimp tool to crimp our terminal onto the wire. And then repeat the process for all the other wires. And then your BMS will look like this. Now we need to connect the B negative to our battery's main negative terminal. And on the main negative terminal, we're gonna have two connectors and a balance lead. So first you wanna double up your BMS wires and have these flush and flat with the negative terminal. And then you put the balance lead on top of everything. And it will look like this and then screw it down. Now we have a BMS that we need to attach to our battery cells. And luckily we have some hose clamps and a heat sink. So this is the first time I'm going to do this. We're going to attach this to these hose clamps. And that doesn't look that bad. Wow. And then put some zip ties on the bottom. And now the BMS is secured. Now we need to add the temperature sensor to the BMS and it plugs in right on the top. And this temperature sensor needs to be attached directly to the cells with some type of electrically non-conductive tape. So I'm going to slap one right here, but we have this wire and this isn't very safe. So we're going to also tape it right here. Now the next step is attaching the Bluetooth module and it just simply plugs in to the BMS right here. I need an electrical tape sponsor because this is a lot of electrical tape. So all you have to do is make sure that these wires do not rub or touch anything like this metal hose clamp right here and make sure that this antenna is protected. 
And then I ran the antenna up the side and then taped it to the case and that's really good. So this battery is actually functional right now. So we're gonna plug it in and test it out. So just plug the balance lead into the BMS and to test if the BMS is on, check the voltage between the C negative and the main battery positive terminal and we have 13.3 volts. So that means that everything is functioning properly. So the next step is putting this battery into a case. And before we mess with anything, we need to disconnect the balance lead so that we do not have power going through the BMS. If you ever wanna turn off the battery, just disconnect the balance lead. And we're gonna shove this battery inside of this battery box and it's gonna to attach to these terminals. But we need to connect these two wires that are the main battery negative and then this terminal, which is main battery positive, to this. And we're gonna make that connection with two wires. So first we're gonna start with connecting these two connectors to our main negative, and we're gonna use a machine screw and a nut and connect them together. And after these wires are connected, slip some heat shrink over it. And now our negative cable is done. I just need to add a terminal connector so I can connect this to the main negative terminal. Now we need to add the positive cable to the main positive of the battery until it looks like this, a main positive and a main negative. Now we just need to throw this into a battery box. And something else to mention is that if you plan to use this with multiple wires and push a lot of amps through this, you should add a fiberboard or some kind of insulative hard material between the BMS and the cells so that the cells do not heat up. But for our application and C-rate, it will be fine to just have it like this, especially with these large cells. These actually have a lot of heat that they can absorb. And honestly, shoving this battery in this box is probably the hardest part because you don't want to hurt anything. Also realize we have a live wire right here that's unfused that could touch this. So you have to be very careful. Check it out guys, it actually fits. There really is not a lot of room in here guys. And you wanna make sure that you can still access the balance cable if you ever have to disconnect it. And the biggest design flaw in this battery so far is that we have all of these terminals that are unprotected. So we're gonna to have to add some kind of insulative protection on top. So I'm just gonna cut a piece of plastic and slap it on top of this. As you guys already noticed, I'm just making this up as I go, so bear with me. And I just used some whisk snips to cut this out with a piece of Tupperware, and it fits perfectly, look at that. Just add a little bit of duct tape. Now we need to add the main battery terminals to the top of this box, but you have to think about how much room you have under here and what it will be touching. I'm going to try to drill a hole right here and then stick this right there. And these are easy to install. Just drill a hole, stick them in there, and tighten it down. And these are surprisingly strong. It looks like a cheap connection, but this is really strong. So now we need to connect this top part to these wires. Now this is the tricky part. We need to connect these wires so they don't pull on anything, but we can still access the balance cable so we can turn it on. Now for the final part, you need to reach in there and put the balance cable into the BMS to turn it all on. So the BMS is connected and we can put the lid on. And check it out, we have a battery. And in order to connect, you need to use the app that I have on my website. You download it and then you install the APK. And then once you connect to the Bluetooth, which works flawlessly without a password, then you're set. And the app has lots of useful features. If you press right here and go to battery state, it will tell you the total voltage, the current going in, the serial number, the average voltage of each individual cell, the temperature sensor in Celsius, the date of manufacture, lots of really cool stuff. And if you press battery voltage, you'll see the battery voltage for each individual cell while it's charging. But what you wanna do is go to parameter view and then you'll be able to see everything. And this will tell you all of the parameters of your BMS currently. The temperature protection features, the voltage protection features, the overcurrent protection, everything you could imagine is in here. But if you wanna change any of this, you're gonna to have to click over here and do params setting. And most of these settings are perfect for lithium iron phosphate, but something that you should change is go to the bottom of param setting and you wanna set the charging load temperature protection to, I don't know, two degrees Celsius. That will ensure that this BMS will protect from low temperature charging. 
and then the reconnect temperature will be at 6 degrees Celsius. And you also have discharge low temperature protection, but you can ignore that because lithium iron phosphate can discharge at negative 20 degrees Celsius. So just keep those settings the same. But just ensure that this charging low temperature at the top is above zero degrees Celsius. So two is perfect and then press submit. And then the settings are saved. That's pretty much it. The other settings you do not have to mess with. Depending on how you set up this battery and your usage needs will determine the settings for this BMS. Let's say you're not pushing 100 amps and you're using just those two wires. For the discharge over current, instead of one having 100 amps as the protection, you could drop that to 80 or 60 or whatever you feel fit for your specified application. Now I've actually tested the low temperature charging protection with cold water and it triggers instantly. It's a really good system. It actually works. But what I hate about this battery is it's pretty ugly. We really need to find a better case for it. But it will work. It will be a very high quality, robust system. So that'll be cool. And right now we're charging at 37 amps. That's pretty impressive with two chargers. So now the battery is fully charged and I also added last night a 300 amp shunt. So we're gonna do the capacity test. So we're running 22 amps and we're gonna come back in a couple hours when this is done. And for this test, we're gonna do 0.2C. So we're pulling 22 amps, this is as close as I can get it. We're gonna see how long it can run it for. So I went out to lunch and I just came back and is almost done with the test. Look at this, 104 amp hours and 1.36 kilowatt hours. Uh-oh. So we got 105 amp hours in 1.37 kilowatt hours. And what's great is that this is a new shunt and I don't know how accurate it is, but this is the same capacity as my old Hall effect sensor, which I know is very accurate. So this is awesome to see. So this battery actually pulled full capacity. That is incredible. And what's really cool is that the BMS has its own shunt. It can tell the state of charge or the current capacity. And it actually changes the capacity after you cycle it one time. And after that last cycle test, we have 104.56 amp hours. And that matches the result that we have with our capacity monitor. And this matches our Hall effect sensor reading. And I also verified it with my new clamp meter from Klein Tools. And this is not sponsored, I just bought this from the store. But yeah, it actually shows you the capacity and all of our numbers match. And we're pushing the full limit of these cells. So this is perfect, this battery works. And the total cost for this battery with everything included, including the wires and the connectors on the inside was $555. And this battery can do almost everything that the more expensive batteries can do. I mean, literally this is the equivalent of like an 800 to a $1,300 battery compared to like a rely on 100 amp hour. So yeah, pretty incredible little system. So we finally did it. So I really need to find a better case material though, something that looks cooler than this, but it works and it's cheap. So I'm pretty happy right now. And if you're on a budget and if you build two of these for like a thousand dollars and then you buy an MPP all in one unit, you could have a full solar power system that is very capable for like half of the cost of anything else on the market. So that's really cool and it's not that hard to build. Also, I bought all of the parts in this battery except for the BMS that was supplied by battery hookup. So a big thank you guys, and it actually works. We have been testing so many BMSs lately and they have failed miserably. So I am so glad that they sent that out to me. And if you wanna build this battery, I'm gonna have a parts list below with sponsored links. So please check it out if you can. And yeah, I hope you guys like this video and I'm so glad we actually built something that works. We have failed so many times in previous videos because something wasn't working as advertised, but we finally have one that works. So this is awesome. So yeah, I'll talk to you guys soon and thank you so much for watching, bye.